excited to be part of the Agilon Health um, Women Physician Initiative because we are actually on the forefront of changing things. Women need a voice, and I think this is the time that we can do that and provide better care for people. Females are highly underrepresented in the medical field. They represent only 3% of healthcare CMOs, 6% of department chairs, 9% of division chiefs, um, just as an example. And, you know, a lot of times I filter things through my mom brain. I'm a mom of a three-year-old little girl, and she already is telling me she wants to be a mommy doctor when she grows up. And I'd like to believe by being a part of this female physician leadership group that we are paving the way for the future. As a female physician that's worked in leadership for a long time, I. I feel like there was lacking the um, ability to see people like me and to bounce things off of other women physician leaders. The challenges continue to be, um, how do you be a person? How are you having a, what we call a work-life balance as well as being able to um, be the best physician you can be? Um, I think we all wanna be the best in every area of our life and that, that is a challenge. How do you be the best mom, the best wife, the best sister, and the best physician? I mean, how do you balance all of that? There are many challenges that female primary care physicians face, uh, one of which is implicit and explicit bias. For instance, for me, as a female physician, I can have a male medical student rotating with me and we walk into a room and the patient will look to the male medical student and address him as doctor and me as his nurse. Um, there's also the gender wage gap Last year, it was reported that the gender wage gap actually increased to 28%, where on average, female physicians make $116,000 less than their male counterpart. There's also burnout. Um, unfortunately, 40% of female physicians go part-time or leave medicine altogether within six years of completion of their residency. I think some of the top challenges facing female physicians today are the work-life balance. So, you know, your professional life is really demanding and your personal life, parenting or other things might also be really demanding. And I think that's a real, a real challenge for female physicians in particular who may have an outsized responsibility in, uh, for parenting or home life. I think the opportunities lie in educating and making others even aware of these things. I think, you know, we kind of have our blinders on sometimes and don't even realize these topics and, and things are happening. I think it's important for women to assume leadership roles in their practice because, again, you're at the forefront of changing primary care, but you also have to be representation for the next generation. If women don't see other women doing it, they don't always believe that they can, and that's where we have to step in. I love the saying, if you can't see me, you can't be me. And if we don't have more female leaders, then we're not going to allow other female physicians or aspiring female physicians to know that they can, they can be that leader as well. I think more female physicians need to take leadership positions so that we can uh, show our face. And I think seeing leaders that look like them will uh, help them become comfortable in our practices. I think female physicians have a unique perspective and our experience is different. And so being able to use that along with the extensive training as a physician, and then with leadership training as well, then all of a sudden you have a leader who has sort of a unique perspective and ability to tackle problems that we haven't made very much progress in the past. And I'm very hopeful that working with this group that hoping we can get together and come up with some really unique solutions.